let's have a closer look at what goes on in detail here in the start method where the GUI is created. So first of all, it's just plain Java code here. So this example is not created with FXML. Um, I will later show a bigger, more complicated example using the uh, FXML language. But I think this all Java example better explains the basic concepts of uh, what goes on in, in the start method that, that are defined in the start method. So, uh, okay, first let's have a look at layout. So there are different layout panes that acts as root nodes in the scene graph. Um, and here we use a flow pane. So a layout pane, for example, the flow pane is a node that can lay out its children uh, according to a particular algorithm. The flow pane simply places them in order. The first thing that is added, uh, the button here is placed first and, and the second, the label is placed after. So it's just left to right, top to bottom in, in order in, with the flow pane. Um, okay, so let's have a look in, in the API documentation. So first of all, the uh, lay, uh, layout panes are in the uh, JavaFX scene layout package. So the flow pane, as I said, lays out its children in the flow, uh, left, right, top to bottom. And let's look at the class hierarchy here. Uh, the parent is the layout pane. That is simply uh, the base class for all layout panes. The parent of that one is the uh, region class, which is uh, uh, the base class for all uh, layouts and UI controls. Controls. So a control that I will speak about shortly is anything that you can go in the layout pane, like buttons, text fields, labels, and so on. The most important thing about the region is that it can be styled with uh, CSS. The superclass of region is parent, which is any node that ha can have children. And the superclass of parent is node, which, which is just uh, any node in the scene graph. Okay, so back to uh, layout panes. So layout pane then is a, a node in the scene graph that uh, can have children and lays out, lays out the children according to a specific algorithm and can be styled with the CSS. So some other examples of um, layout panes are grid pane, places the children in uh, a matrix with the rows uh, and the columns. And you can add uh, control with many properties about how, how to center, align uh, a particular compo uh, component within the cell and um, spaces between components and there are loads of things. Some other important layout panes are, are the anchor pane which uh, places e each child at a fixed coordinate, an xy coordinate. And it stays there, no matter uh, how the uh, window is resized or whatever. And that's, for example, the um, uh, h-box that creates uh, a row of components and places them in order in, that, in the row. So there was a few words about uh, uh, layout. Uh, the next thing to look at is uh, UI controls. So uh, a control is a, a component in, on the screen. So in this small example, there are two components, the button and the uh, label. Uh, UI controls are located in the um, JavaFX scene uh, control package. So here you can see button, uh, checkbox, dialog, combo box, well, typical uh, UI controls. Next thing to consider is event handling. So in any GUI toolkit, uh, you need to be able to react to user gestures. Like for example, clicking the button, pressing a certain key on the button, moving the button, pressing a key and, and so on. So there are numerous uh, event types and you can register event handlers for all those event types. So in JavaFX, uh, very briefly, it goes on like this. 
under the hood, so to say, that uh, when um, the user uh, does something, for example, let's consider clicking the button. So the user clicks the button. This is the mouse cursor. The user is clicking. Okay, so uh, when uh, uh, there is a user gesture, an event is uh, created. Let's make it red. And what happens is that the event is sent from the root down through the entire scene graph until it reaches the uh, uh, component that generated the event, the button in this case. So this descending is called uh, capturing, event capturing. Um, then it, uh, the event returns up, that's called event bubbling. And you can uh, uh, re uh, intercept the capturing phase going down by registering filters, and you can intercept the bubbling phase going up by registering uh, uh, handlers. Okay, but we really we don't need to understand all the details about this because uh, it, it's sufficient to use convenience methods and don't uh, without bothering about capturing a bubbling phase. And the com convenience methods are called set on and then the action, uh, the, sorry, the event name, action in this case. So we can get very far by only considering the action event. And an action event is triggered when the user either clicks a button or types return, hits uh, enter in a text field. Uh, in fact, uh, the action e event is the only event that will be used in this, tutor in this tutorial. Okay, so, so the convenience method for the action is event then is set on action. So each controller has, that can trigger an action event has the set on action method. And okay, to uh, register an event handler, we pass an object of the event handler interface to the uh, set on action method. And that object shall have a handle method. And inside this uh, handle method um, is the code that is actually executed when the event is triggered. There's only one line here. It sets the, changes the text on, on the label, uh, this label over here. So um, in brief then, to, to register an event handler, you create an event handler, which is an object uh, uh, implementing the interface event handler. Uh, and pass a reference to that object to the set on action if it's the action event uh, method in the controller for which you want to register the event handler. Um, let's have a look at the um, Java doc. So um, event handling is done in the with the Java FX event package. So the, these are the base classes for event handling. Here's the event handler uh, and uh, the action event uh, class that symbolizes an action event. So um, there are many diff more different event classes and much more to be said about event handling and that's spread out over the packages where the, uh, the classes generating the event are located. But this is all we need to know about event handling. Uh, we, we can get quite far just with this basic knowledge.